Hello, and welcome to Monthly Mailbag, where we answer your basic and acidic questions from the comment section. This month, we tackle a great question from Brett Finley's talk on microbes that had actually never occurred to me before. Cup of Tea wanted to know, doesn't your stomach acid kill all the microbes? To answer that, first, let's talk about stomachs. Your stomach is a bag about this big that sits right here, under your diaphragm, sandwiched between your liver and spleen and intestines. Its job is to continue what you started in your mouth, break down food so that it can be absorbed by your intestines. And it's got a couple of major tools that it uses for this. It's got acids and enzymes. The acid creates the right environment, and the enzymes get to work snipping up proteins and fats. Cells on the inside lining of the stomach, called parietal cells, secrete hydrochloric acid, and most proteins find it very difficult to stay curled up in this acidic environment. And then the specially adapted enzymes do their best work at low pHs. An interesting side note here, in order to make hydrochloric acid, the cells also have to secrete bicarbonate, which gets diffused into the bloodstream. Because the stomach has to make a lot more acid when you eat, there's actually something called an alkaline tide right after a meal when your blood becomes more basic. The two major digestive enzymes in the stomach are pepsin, which breaks down proteins, and gastric lipase, which breaks down sugars and fats. And these are both made by probably my favorite stomach cell type, gastric chief cells. These bad boys pump out food-destroying chemical scissors that work best when the acidity is turned way up. But the acidity of the stomach has another very important function. It makes for a very hostile environment for bacteria and viruses. Cells generally don't deal well with overly acidic conditions. The proteins that are supposed to control the flow of particles between inside the cell and outside the cell get denatured. They unfurl, just like the other proteins, and stop being able to do their jobs. This creates holes in the cell membrane. And because there's a strong gradient, the acid rushes in and dissolves everything in sight. So cup of tea is right that having an acidic stomach is great protection against the vast majority of microbes. But not all of them. Some microbes, like salmonella, can't survive the harsh acid on their own, but they're really good at hiding in our food. They take advantage of the food using up some of the acid and creating a more alkaline environment. But studies show that they survive better in protein-rich foods like meat and eggs, suggesting that they're somehow using the byproducts of protein digestion, amino acids, for protection. Salmonella is good at hiding from acid, but it doesn't do well with heat, which is why people are so careful to properly cook their meat. Other bacteria, like E. coli and Shigella, have evolved acid resistance and pass pretty much unscathed through the stomach by producing these amino acids themselves and by using some other protection mechanisms. These species are particularly dangerous, and they can make you really sick when they set up camp in your intestines. These are the microbes you're trying to kill when you wash your hands before eating or preparing food. The other common stomach microbe that can survive the acid is Heliobacter pylori, or H. pylori, which has a really interesting story. People used to think that stomach ulcers and gastritis, which is inflammation of the stomach lining, were caused by an excess of stomach acid. So the treatment was pretty simple. You take antacids and drugs that stop your parietal cells from doing their jobs. And these treatments weren't particularly effective. But in the 1980s, two Australian scientists, Barry Marshall and Robin Warren, discovered that a lot of their gastritis patients were infected with this bacterium, H. pylori. After a couple of years of investigation, they were convinced that gastritis had nothing to do with diet and was actually the result of a bacterial infection. But the rest of the medical community just didn't believe them. The prevailing wisdom was that the stomach was sterile just because of this acid. So Barry took science into his own hands and experimented on himself. I don't recommend this. He drank a meat broth loaded with H. pylori and he waited. A couple of days later, he started feeling ill with nausea and bad breath. And within a few weeks, he was vomiting and generally feeling awful. He took a sample from his stomach, and sure enough, there was H. pylori. After taking some antibiotics, he felt a lot better, and the H. pylori went away. The medical textbooks had to be rewritten, and doctors Marshall and Warren were awarded the Nobel Prize for their work in 2005. So to come back to the question, yes, stomach acid is an important part of the body's microbial defense system. But it's not perfect. Many species can survive the acid, so don't skip washing up or properly cooking your food. A quick appendix on the appendix. In the research for this video, I found out that the appendix actually does have a function. It acts as a backup drive for gut bacteria, resetting the balance after an emergency evacuation, if you know what I mean. It also might have a role in building up immunity. It didn't really fit into this answer, but I thought it was fascinating, so I thought I'd share. Thanks for watching. If you want your science question to be featured in the next monthly mailbag, comment below or on any of our amazing science lectures. 
You can also tweet at us at ri underscore science.